Hello all and welcome to Movie Bears Podcast TV, or as we like to call it, MBP TV. I'm Brad Harris and each week our cute cast of Bears and Cubs tackles the latest and greatest happenings in TV land. And this week, as usual, I'm accompanied by my co-host Steve Kinchelik. Hello everyone. And Casey Scott. Ahoy ahoy. So this week, we're also very thrilled to welcome a special guest to MVP TV. He's currently on Spike TV's $10 million Bigfoot Bounty and also hosts an incredibly popular Bigfoot-related podcast called After Hours with Richter. He's also a very hunky bear with a penchant for really long glow sticks. Richter Riolo, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Hey, you know, it's an honor to be here with you boys. Yes. Nice. <laughs> is that a lightsaber in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see it? Oh, why don't you uh, bend over and find out? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> uh, so this week we're celebrating reality TV in its various forms. Whether you're a closet survivor fan or an out and proud Real Housewife, chances are you've enjoyed at least some kind of reality TV the last couple decades. So this week we're discussing why reality TV has become so popular and what elements make for really good reality programming. But before we get to that, I'm going to spend a little bit of quality time with Richter, sort of getting to know him a bit, and discussing his experiences with Sasquatch, lightsabers, and $10 million Bigfoot bounty. Richter, can you tell us a little bit about how you ended up on the show? Was it something you applied for, or did they find you? How did that work? You know, it's interesting. I would have to say it's like the domino effect. I'm an artist, and I was a fan of Animal Planet's Finding Bigfoot, and I was drawing those four cast members in inappropriate ways, and oh. it was very funny. <laughs> and it caught their attention, and they thought it was hysterical, Cliff Brackman, James Fay, Bobo, and they're like, keep drawing, it's awesome. I mean, okay, so I kept doing it, uh -huh. and therefore the online Bigfoot community on Facebook and Bigfoot forums saw my artwork and then people were like oh can you draw me can you draw me and you know i'm like sure you're kind of cute I'll, I'll draw you with like you know bulging muscles and, uh -huh. and and i'll draw the women really hot voluptuous sexy and my artwork really propelled me in the online bigfoot forum uh, i then was approached to do a blog radio program by a bigfoot quote unquote field reporter and that was a lot of fun did that two years ago and then I left to do my own thing which was after hours with Richter which is my ongoing webcast and I became really good friends with a bunch of other people that produce online Bigfoot content on YouTube uh and BigfootEvidence.blogspot.com, the, the mm. world's best, most popular Bigfoot uh, website next to the BFRO, of course. Mm -hmm. And we all became really good friends. We all supported each other. We promoted one another. And, you know, it's all about networking. And each of us have something different that we bring to the table. I'm the outspoken gay guy that Bigfooters are not known to have. You know, it's like the, right. good, it's like the good old boy. <laughs> with the su with the southern draw, I mean, what you know about Bigfoot? I mean, for real, no joke. Uh -huh, yeah. And then here, I, here I come, I explode on the scene. I make no qualms about my sexuality. In fact, I use it, mm -hmm. you know. And so, when Spike TV was in the beginning stages of casting the ten million dollar Bigfoot bounty, they go online. They start mm -hmm. to see what's out there on YouTube and on websites, and they contacted my friends who were a part of a group called Team Taser on Facebook, and. And uh, they're like, okay, so who would be, uh, who do you think would be good for us to contact to audition for mm -hmm. this new reality show? And they're like, oh my gosh, you got to get Richter. And mm -hmm. they're like, why? And uh -huh. <laughs> my friend said, because he's gay. And so <laughs> Spike TV, the casting director, contacts me and uh -huh. we started talking on Skype, just like what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. And she's like, so Richter, tell me, you're a gay man. Why Bigfoot? And the only thing I could think of was, He's big and hairy. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I had her laughing so hard. Um, that's when I knew I got them because I'm quick. I'm witty, you know. And when you're casting a reality show, you're bringing in all different walks of life, different personalities, people that have to think quick, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. the cameras are rolling. And, um, yeah, so now here I am. So it's so been an you, interesting journey. So you mentioned, you know, that um, you, you know, you have met a lot of people in the online community and, and 
you're very out and everyone's sort of okay with that. But being on this show and being in close quarters and in the presence of a lot of these people, was being out and gay ever an issue? Were you treated well by it? Because it seemed very machismo. Like you said, there's that sort of, you know, what you know about Bigfoot, you know, sort of thing and maybe some ignorance. And sometimes that can be a problem with, with right. people, you know, right. gay people. Did, were you treated pretty well by the okay. other cast members? I was blessed. I'll put it that way. Um, the majority of everyone on the show were my friends because of the Bigfoot community being so small and because of our, I guess you'd say, click. Uh, we were fortunate to all be cast on this Bigfoot um, reality show. So I already went into this having an established relationship with five people on the show. Yeah. The rest, the other people were hunters we've never met before. And um, we have the, the black father and son team. We've got the two girls uh, that are hunters that are um very sweet and adorable, and uh, the the two giant guys, they're Indians, they're uh, Native Americans, yeah. they're, they're Mohawks, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm blessed. Everybody, they, it was never an issue, you know, That's and good to hear. do you know how cool that was? Because you know, yeah, I'm always on defense, and uh -huh. but you know what? The Bigfoot community, on the other hand, when the show aired... I started getting all the homophobic comments from yeah. Bigfoot um, researchers who I've always admired and respected. And there's these guys that are saying, what does your sexuality have anything to do with Bigfoot in? And it's like everything. I bring new ideas to the table. My right. casts, if you saw the first episode of Bigfoot Bounty, the casts that my, me and my friend Dax brought were pink. Mm -hmm. Why? Okay, well, if you add food coloring to a plaster cast, it's going to bring out details that the normal white color would wash out. Dermal right. ridges, uh, skin flaps, perhaps hair that could be trapped in the plaster. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I added pink food coloring to it. You know, mm -hmm. Would a straight southern draw big food researcher ever think of that? No. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So oh, yes, yeah. my right. sexuality <laughs> has everything to do with my big footing. But it's so. interesting because I, I don't think they even really mentioned your sexuality in the first episode and all that. Much. I mean, well, you had you mm -hmm. had your chain on the right. rainbow chain, but did they even mention you were gay oh, in the first well, episode? Um, I yeah, I do it. I I was in okay. full control of that. Yeah. And um, the the original cut of the first episode was two hours long. Uh. So a lot of good stuff was on the editing floor. Now, who's to say they might use it in the second episode? Right. Yeah. Now that right. one team has been eliminated, there's more room. That's to true. Yes. You know, and then there's the third, you know, so on and so on. So who knows? We'll see. Um, we'll do uh, another bear uh, podcast like this after Bigfoot Bunny is all finished. Oh, yeah, definitely. We have to. The, <laughs> I can give you the ins and outs. Of, yeah. uh, nice. Right. That would be awesome. There are pretty hysterical, funny moments regarding me. Mm. And you're going to see some of them uh, this coming Friday. So, Can't yeah. Wait. Yeah, you're gonna see a you're gonna see a bear out in the woods in his natural form. Oh my! Uh, I'm gonna oh. say that's all I'm gonna say, Brad. Have <laughs> uh, more than we were anticipating. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I've got my I've got my DVR warmed up. Right. <laughs> it's gonna get hot. <laughs> rewind, fast forward, rewind. Yeah. Well, so you mentioned that uh, that you knew several other of the cast members that coming into the show. Did you mm -hmm. become close to any of the other people that you didn't know while you were doing the show? I'm sorry. Repeat the question. Did I not what? I'm sorry. There were some other. There are other people on the show that you didn't know beforehand. Were there any? Was there anyone that you became close to through the process of making the show that you didn't know before? Yes, actually, we became quite a family because we were sequestered. Uh, you have 18 people at this lodge. We cannot get on our cell phones. We cannot get on the Internet. Um, if we want to go to the, the local store there in Glenwood, Washington, we would have to have our casting coordinator take us um, as a group. You know, it was like it was almost like being a big brother. So that being said, all of us. You know, hung out with each other, got to know each other very, very well. We became a family, mm -hmm. you know. And when the cameras came on, okay, if we had to fight, we'll fight. We'll bring it out. I'll, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll rip you a new one. Like the girls, just one girl. Uh -huh. She's Julie on the show. She's very pretty. She's very attractive, and she always has her hair done and her nails perfect. I'm like, what the hell? You're going bigfooting. This isn't like you know a make <laughs> artist convention. What are you doing? Yeah, you know, rubbing let me crap see your in their hair. <laughs> no, I mean, why are you wearing perfume? What are you trying to do? That's not going to attract a Bigfoot. You know, I just right. that. You know, that's what, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Unless well, exactly. you have to think logically about these things. I mean, yeah, yeah, because yeah, you had the guy that rolled around in shit to, to, right. to make sure that he could, you know, get rid of yeah. an ant scent or whatever. And, and don't forget, he also ate shit. 
Oh, right. yeah. Exactly. Oh, so, oh, that was like the funniest line of the whole episode. He's like, what What did he say? Like, it's an 80% of body odor is from your mouth, so you, well, need to, so you have to cover it up. He said, sometimes you just got to put it in your mouth. And oh, yeah. my partner and I laughed so hard at that. That's you a know. Good. Amen. It was, right. <laughs> it was very good. We were like, yeah, but not for the reason you probably mean. Right. Yeah, yeah. Justin, that's Justin Smea, and he's a really good man. He is the most yeah. hated man in Bigfooting because of his story that he had killed two Sasquatch. And it's been ongoing for the past three years. Now, you know what? He didn't bring back any evidence that has been proven to be Bigfoot. Here is where his story makes you go, hmm. Mm. There's been ongoing investigations at that uh, location up in the Sierras where he allegedly shot and killed these two Sasquatch. Right. Um, uh, Bigfoot researcher and boys, you need to check him out. His name is Bart Coutinho. He is one hot stud. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. He is probably the most credible Bigfoot researcher out there. And uh-huh. he captured three potential Sasquatch on thermal at the exact location where Justin had allegedly shot and killed two Bigfoot. And there's casts. So there's there's evidence to back up Justin's claim. Right. However, he did walk away from the jackpot by not bringing back the little baby body that he killed. Right. You know, so And I thought it was interesting, you know, the the you know, one of the doctors on the show was like, you know, is it possible you killed two human beings? Uh, and we didn't really get to see much of Justin's reaction to that. Um, I mean, it, it sounds like he is pretty sure that he killed two uh, Bigfoots, right? Not Big Feet, it's Bigfoot, right? Yeah. I have no idea. I call him Sas- <laughs> Here's what I call him, guys. I call him Sasquai. Oh, there you yeah. go. Oh, oh, I nice. like that. Sasquai. Nice. That's good. Mm-hmm. But uh, do you know, like, did he bristle at all at, at sort of that insinuation? I mean, did he have any kind of negative reaction to that that we didn't get to no. see? No, he um, kicked back, was sitting in the chair like you saw on TV, and pissed off all the other hunters. I mean, they all hated him, hated him, and wow. how dare you, and you have no moral ethic, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, you know what? You're a hunter. What are you talking about having a moral ethic? You're hunting an, a defenseless, harmless animal that was trying to eat, maybe provide for its young. Who right. are you? You know? Good At least point. we're all here, you know, wanting our $10 million to prove Bigfoot's real. Yeah. I will, and I even said, that was edited, I uh-huh. will check my morals for $10 million. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it it nice. does seem sort of it, that was sort of one of the defining ep- moments of the first episode, though, because it does kind of seem that was the biggest question I had when watching it is if he killed two Bigfoot and only came back with a little piece of hair, like there, it just seems really strange that there were no pictures or no like you know he couldn't bring a body part back or something. You know, it, it's it's just very odd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, is there you know? <clears throat> You, you said the other hunters were sort of uh, angry at him, but you know, and he's passed lie detector tests about his story. But does uh, you don't think a lot of people are questioning his story? Um, the Bigfoot community online, especially, you if you notice it, they are for the most part. <sighs> I don't want to sound like a jerk. Wackos are crazy. I mean, they think, no, guys, listen to me. Listen to this. They think Bigfoot's your friend. Mm. Um, He has telepathy. He is the descendant of Cain. He is the watcher of man and has the ability to cloak himself. Mm. Now, what animal on this planet has Klingon technology? Right. (laughs) Tell me. Tell me. None. All right. So therefore, my argument is this. It's a living, breathing animal that requires food, water, and shelter. Yeah. It does not give a damn if it's the descendant of Cain or it has telepathy. <laughs> you know, where are these people getting it? You know, it's like a religious thing. Please. So yeah. big, So back to your to answer your question, Justin is believed by these people to be a murderer, mm. and he has gotten death threats. Wow. Mm. Okay, so it's very extreme. <laughs> yeah. People have threatened to picket him when his uh, documentary came out back in November wow. up in Sacramento. So, you know, it's just, it's like with anything that's going on. Look at the gay community. Look at West right. Barrow, the Baptist Church. We got, look at politics. Look at the re- lefts and the the, the, the the liberals versus the right wing. You know, I mean, it's in everything. And from what I understand, boys, the UFO paranormal community is worse. 
Yeah. yeah, I believe that. It's it's so interesting, like the sort of the reactions that people have. Like, I was doing a little research today because I'm, you know, I mean, I, I've always been familiar with the idea of Bigfoot. Um, Harry and the Hendersons is one of my favorite movies growing up. Um, so, but I was I was doing a little bit of research today, and I stumbled across straight um, Bigfoot erotica. Uh, huh. oh, oh, and it was a huge website donated, yeah. uh, devoted to these stories about um, women who like to have Bigfoot, I guess, come in and and rape them. I don't know. Like, oh, I felt really uncomfortable. You know? <laughs> I didn't even know that existed. You know, there's an audience for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it, there really is. Um, is just curious though, uh, you know, with the format of the show, um, one of the things that I've been reading is, you know, they're calling it the ten million dollar Bigfoot bounty, and I think the uh, a lot of people are saying, well, the reason why they're offering ten million dollars is because they don't believe that you guys are going to be able to furnish enough evidence to have to pay it out. Um, is they haven't discussed on the show though if if there is no evidence at the end, are there backup prizes? Uh, yeah, here's what Dean Kane has said. Um, the last team standing will win a $100,000 grant to continue their research. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Wow, that's fantastic. Hmm. So, wow. yeah. Yeah, okay, so you have to tune in and find out and see who makes it to the end. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> oh, well, what, I was actually going to ask about Dean Kane actually. I mean, because mm-hmm. what, what were your experiences like with him? I think he's hotter now than he ever was, honestly. I agree with you. I <laughs> yeah. agree with you. Uh, he's, oh, yeah. He's, he's yeah. a grown-up now. He's a man. He's got, yes. yeah. he's got stubble on his face. Right. He's filled out nicely. Right. You know, he's hunky. He's smart. He is a genuine gay ally. Yes, definitely. And thank God for him. You know, I mean, I wish we had more like him. You know, he is um, the big brother we all have always wished we had if we didn't have a big brother like that. You know, he's he's got my back and he's Mm -hmm. funny and playful and he can he can dish right back. I was about to I would I would I would throw it at him, you know, Uh and he would. (laughs) For instance, on one time um, I say to him, hey, Dean, I found your Superman cape. And he looks at me and he's like, where, on eBay? And I'm like, no, on my bedroom floor. <laughs> and he's like, ooh. So the next day, I lose my wallet and uh-huh. he finds it. And he finds me in the lodge, wakes me up, throws the wallet at me. And he goes, hey, I found your wallet on my bedroom floor. <laughs> oh, and wow. everybody was hysterically laughing. Oh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, he's great. It was yeah. so- Oh, that's that's good yeah, there, there you go. You got some behind the scenes stuff that went down between <laughs> Richter and Dean Kane. <laughs> <laughs> now a different kind of erotica will flourish, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So Richter, tell us more about this lightsaber thing. So we saw your blog on StarWars.com. By the way, congrats on that. I loved Thank reading you. that. Um, but for <laughs> uh, for our listeners who may not have have read the blog, um, but maybe saw the show and only got sort of that two seconds of explanation like what's the deal with the lightsaber rave in the woods what's that okay. all about gentlemen brad casey steven let's say we're all big footing right now and we're all in the middle of nowhere it's pitch black mm-hmm. and brad pulls out his little energizer flashlight and it's this little itty bitty little concentrated beam of light in a small little concentrated area Richter pulls out his big lightsaber and shoom, the entire forest floor lights up. Mm. It's amazing what you can see. Let's say you lost your keys. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I, I, we're screwed. We can't. We, there's no way we're going to find our keys until daylight. Well, pull out the lightsaber, boom, the whole forest floor just lights up. It was the most amazing. Wow. Now, that's for normal every day. You're out in the forest. Bring your lightsaber. You're, you're gonna. You're not gonna trip and fall. It's great mm-hmm. for bigfooting. My partner on the show, Dax Rushlow, he's had two bigfoot experiences in his life, which is why I chose him to be my partner for the show. Mm-hmm. And he has taken. He's a big Star Wars fan like me, and he has taken his lightsabers out. And the noise and the light is unlike anything any animal has seen in the forest before, mm-hmm. unless you're an Ewok. You know, so <laughs> he has had Sasquatch, 
become curious up in um, New England where he goes squatching and come closer towards his tent area because of that lightsaber approach. So naturally, both of us Star Wars fans, both of us on Bigfoot Bounty, we're bringing our lightsabers. Right. You know what I mean? So who's to say what we saw on TV with Dax, you know, with the lightsabers and stuff, and then we heard those Bigfoot sounds. Um, maybe, you know, that's what brought them in. We don't know. Mm. Yeah. Maybe. Ooh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so the whole Star Wars approach was actually very practical, and mm. I recommend it to the good old boys that are watching the show or listening to the show. Hey, that's a good idea. Let's bring on lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's methodology to the color, right? Green works better than red? Yes. Uh, my lightsaber was red. Dax's was green. And uh, the green light um, just really illuminated the floor. It was mm. amazing. I wish the camera could have gotten it, but, you know, of course he didn't. Was right. it difficult to sort of lug them around at all? or No, um, oh, okay. no, it was easy. You just put them in your backpack, boom, there you go. The only time we had trouble with was when we were at the airport and the, you know, the TSD, you're like, what's this? Is this yeah. a <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and I'd tell the guy, I go, yeah, be careful, it might cut your hand off. <laughs> and he would yeah. look at me and I'm like, wow. Luke Skywalker, it happened to him. <laughs> you, know? Yeah, exactly. you know, the he TSD, they're, they're oh. so stiff. Come on. Uh-huh. I'd right. say. And of course when they turn it on, every single geek TSD um employee am I saying it right? TSD? TSA, I think. TSA. TSA. Yeah. I'm sorry guys, I'm a dizzy queen. TSA, every <laughs> single every single DS, TSA employee came running over and like, oh my god, that's a lightsaber. Oh my god, that is so cool. Why do you have that? Uh-huh. That's I'm, like, awesome. uh, I'm going on a reality show. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Who doesn't go on a reality show without Exactly them? these days? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> It was pretty damn cool. That's awesome. Um, will you continue Bigfooting after the show? I mean, is this, you know, I, I assume this is a yes, but I mean, is this something that's going to be sort of a, will you, has this show encouraged you to do it more and more often? Well, here's the thing. Um, being that I live in Las Vegas, I'm sort of landlocked. Mm-hmm. I have to work full time. I have bills to pay. I can't just like take off and go Bigfooting with my friends, spend three weeks out in the middle of nowhere. You know, I mean, I would have to seriously plan that. So when I had the opportunity with um, Spike, they're like, well, Richter, you've never been out in the forest before. You know, how are you going to be able to handle your own? And my partner, Dax, was like, well, Richter's got a great attention for detail and he is book smart when it comes to Bigfoot. I'm street smart. Haha. So that's, you know, Dax and I made a perfect partner that way. A perfect mm-hmm. team. Excuse me. Yeah. So, um, yes, uh, I had to save myself for Spike so that they could <laughs> pop my. They could pop my Bigfoot cherry, and they did, and they did it very well. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, I go Bigfooting for the first time with cameras on me. How cool is that? Yeah. You know? um, I'll give you a real quick, a little backstory. There was this one um, douchebag in Bigfooting that uh-huh. kind of gave me trouble and put me down saying, well, you know, you don't have a place to stand in regards to Bigfoot research. You've never gone out Bigfooting. You don't have any, you know, you're just an armchair general. And I'm thinking, well, that kind of sucks. I mean, I live in Vegas. I haven't had a chance to go Bigfooting. Well, right. guess what? I do it in a very big way. Exactly. <laughs> right. you know? So I kind of had the last laugh. Right. Very true. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, I want to ask you guys some questions. Sure. Right. Go ahead. Ask Casey, away. Casey, yes. you're kind of cute. I'm going to start with you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> do, you think, do you think Bigfoot's real? And if it is, why isn't it discovered? Oh. Uh, that's a really good question. You know, I don't uh, – I honestly – I think that something exists that would fit the description of what Bigfoot is. And But I don't have a good reason for why it hasn't been discovered yet. I don't know why it's been so elusive to, to everyone except the select few. So I guess maybe that's why the Bigfoot community kind of – develops this religion around it because if they've seen it well maybe they feel like they're the chosen ones because they're not out and about just for everyone to see Mm -hmm. but um yeah i i mean there's not enough evidence proving that there isn't a bigfoot for me i mean i i kind of believe in in just about everything um until it's been proven to me (laughs) to my to my face right otherwise so Uh yeah so yeah i i'm totally on board with the idea of bigfoot existing and what about you steven um i I have to say I'm pretty confident that I, I do not believe in Bigfoot. Uh, it's To me, it's one of those things where um, there's enough sightings of Bigfoot that there would be some evidence by this point, either you know, uh, Prince, Shelter. I mean, it would have to be sort of a trained assassin type person to be able to cover its tracks the way 
uh, it's it's done so far. Like you said, it's um, you know it would have to have some sort of shielding technology to be able to disappear the way it has. And there's no shelter, there's no carcasses, there's no um, you know dead bodies that you know, you you'd at least have at least one that just died of natural causes out in the wilderness that somebody stumbled across. Um, you know, based on the number of sightings, it's not. If there were one Bigfoot, I could believe it was a uh, a little bit more elusive. You know, and if it had you know the fountain of youth, you know, where it never died, but um, I just have a hard time believing it, you know, and I, I think that uh, the sightings either are confusion or, you know, of some other type of animal or just sort of, you know, wishful thinking in a way. You want to see it that mm. bad and you see something move and you, you just put it in your mind. Um, but uh, I am also – the way I say I'm, I'm pretty confident is that I'm also the kind of person that I leave things open until it's you know, definitively you know, done. Um, so, so you're if, open to it. Oh, definitely. That's why it's, I think this is an interesting show. If, if, if some evidence comes forth, I'm, you know, I'm definitely open to it. You know, but it's, I, just, I have a hard time believing that you know, somebody is successfully going to prove it, in, at least in this series. Hmm. Okay, and you, Brad? Well, I have big feet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so big foot exactly. <laughs> right now. Uh, you know what? It's uh, it, I don't know. It's one of those things for me. Like I am a romantic at heart. I love to to believe in sort of the, you know, the the unprovable things, UFOs, uh, Bigfoot. You know, it's like mm-hmm. I, I don't know that. Um, you know that. The more, I guess, logical side of me is is kind of like nodding along with what Steve is saying, like, you know, why haven't we found proof and da-da-da. Mm-hmm. But the romantic side of me, I feel like a frosted mini-wheat right now. Um, <laughs> it's like, yes, like I totally believe something is out there. And, you know, I, I'm really anxious for that proof to finally come out. Um, you <laughs> know, I, I, I can't definitively say one way or the other, but who doesn't have fun going out well, into the woods looking for – you know, the unknown. Like, I, I think there's something really sort of special about that, and, and I would love to see it happen. Well, you know, it's a mystery, mm-hmm. and it's a yeah. monster story, the things that go bump in the night. It's, you know, it's it's exhilarating. It's like going on a roller coaster. You get a rush from it. Um, I remember being a kid being so scared of Bigfoot. You know, I was like, oh, my gosh, it's dark. It's going to come grab me, you know. Yeah. Um, I like to look at it from the scientific possibility point of view because I've said this numerous, numerous times. Humans, Homo sapiens, and Neanderthals shared the Earth recently, 30,000 years ago. And in the eye of the universe, that's a blink. It was like, you know, it was like literally like 10, 10 seconds ago. You know, so humans and Neanderthals worked and competed against each other for resources in um, Eastern Europe. Who's to say that there was a third primate that saw humans and Neanderthals fighting amongst each other and was like, oh, hell no. I ain't going to go down there. I'm going to stick up to the forest. Come on, LaQuisha. Let's go, girl. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Right? And we just, right? and the, yeah, and we don't want to, they, they don't want to be seen, so they just stay well, in. And that's right. my thing. Like, I'm a huge comic fan, and, um, I really love the Gorilla Grodd character from DC Comics. Mm-hmm. And so part of me is thinking, like, maybe these Sasquatches or Sasquai or whatever you call them are really intelligent. Maybe they have, like, this whole underground community somewhere and we only well, see them. there is a lot of data, a lot of reports of them being intelligent and having a language. There is the Sierra Sounds. I suggest you guys Google the Bigfoot Sierra Sounds on YouTube. It's amazing. It sounds like samurai chatter. Like, it sounds just like that. It's so bizarre. Now, that being said, this leads into a whole new um, road here. If these things have a form of intelligence where they can communicate, that means uh, culture is shared. Knowledge is shared because of communication. So, therefore, these things are on par with almost human intelligence. So, maybe that's why the scientific community, maybe there's a government conspiracy. I don't know. I'm just saying if these things are able to communicate, you know, how do you think the world would react to having these things? Right. In our backyard. They need Jesus. We need to bring them in. They have they have right. constitutional rights. No, they're right. not they're not human. They're not a part of our society. Uh-huh. So it would probably open a, the door to chaos. You know. Mm-hmm. So how would you incorporate them into our society? Would we right. want to? You know. Would they be able to handle us? You know. What about disease? You know. I, there's mm-hmm. there's it's it makes you wonder. You know. So I think it's a blessing that they have not been 
up until now because we don't know what happens on Bigfoot Bounty, right. uh, that they have not been scientifically proven. But you know what? Science is discovering new animals. Look at that ugly-looking primate that was found in China, that snub-nosed monkey. Mm. It's like the ugliest monkey I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> and that was just discovered, what, two and a half, three years ago. Right. Yeah. You know, the no, gorillas. That's... Look at the gorillas. That wasn't but proven to be uh, real until like the early 1900s. Yeah. No, you know that's, I mean? that's definitely right. where there's a possibility still is that there's, you know, new species discovered every year. They mention that in the intro of the show, and mm-hmm. which is right. true. And, and even, you know, um, there's new um, dinosaur bones discovered every once in a while, you know, where oh, a, sure. a new species mm-hmm. of dinosaur, you know, was discovered where we haven't found a carcass before, you know. So right. that's why it's – there's always there's always room, you know – like in my mind, you know, there's always room for something new. You shouldn't ever be closed-minded. You should always, you know, have your glass empty and waiting to be filled up. But um, right. at the same time, it's, uh, you know, it's just it's it's harder and harder when there's just absolutely no evidence out oh, there. Sure. But at the same time, on the flip side, I'm a UFO believer. There's no evidence, real definitive ev- evidence. But I keep on thinking we cannot be the only ones in this universe. Right. You know, so well, let's use science to back up your claim. The universe has been around for almost 14 billion years. We are the new kids on the block. Who's right. to say what has come before us? Right. You know? yep, and, that, and that leads into this next um, thought process. Humans, we are so arrogant when it comes to thinking that we are the know-all, be-all, yeah. end-all. Our, well, our true, arrogance man. is so blinding. Yeah. And, I, and I think it's probably to Bigfoot's um, uh, protection. I mean, hey, they're living, doing their thing up in the forest in British Columbia, Vancouver, Washington, you know, where there's no people. Right, yeah. You know, so they're flourishing. Right. I think, in my opinion, that's where they're flourishing. It's way up there. And then you get the ones that are like, you know, kind of retarded, venturing forth into the Sierras and getting shot by Justin Smea. They're, <laughs> yeah. right. they're, right. they're like Sasquatches with Alzheimer's that like wander off and only. <laughs> you know, I mean, and I think, you know, until we get a Sasquatch that gets rabies and starts like attacking kids playing soccer with soccer moms filming the attack on their cell phones, you know, <laughs> CNN's not going to really seriously give it any um, attention right. unless right. someone from the $10 million our Bigfoot Bounty wins. That's exactly. true. That's true. Oh, so <laughs> speaking of uh, ten million dollar Bigfoot Bounty, that airs Fridays on Spike TV. Yes. Yes, at ten o'clock and nine central. Now, is that running? Uh, like, how many episodes is there this season? Do you know? Eight. Eight. Okay. Eight, yes. Okay. Awesome. And are they yeah. running all in a row, or are they like taking a break in between a couple of them? I do not know the answer to that. I do okay. know that um, they play the episodes on Spike.com. You can uh, join in on the chatter on Twitter with all of us. Mm-hmm. All of us um, cast members are easily reachable to talk about the subject matter. Awesome. So, yeah. So oh, yeah, be- Mike. So wait, let's tell everybody. Okay, you got to. Okay, gay guys, follow mm-hmm. me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> at, it's at Richter underscore Riolo. So yeah, I'm I'm like critically single. So I'm hoping maybe I get a boyfriend <laughs> or a husband out of this TV show. Damn it! Actually, yeah, that there would be go. great. <laughs> the, the other, Richter. The other, the other mission of the bounty hunt is to find, is to find a husband. For yeah, this. now it's gonna be like the ten million dollar broke back bounty feature. Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, is, right. is, is, is your growler name be my Sasquatch? Question <laughs> Growler, growler. Am I on growler? I might be. You know, is that that bear thing? Uh, yeah. yeah I think okay, you is. know what? I deleted it because I hated the stupid sound effects. Uh, what the yeah. hell? Uh, <laughs> At least Scruff has got that. <laughs> it's a little more high tech. That my, uh, my friends call that growler noise the whore alert. <laughs> yes, and it's exactly. so funny because like when you're when, when you're at like a bear gathering and like oh that thing is sounding off every five seconds you're like who's whoring it up now hey, um, boys i'm gonna say it's all about scruff scruff season <laughs> mm. uh it's a i deleted both of my phone i just don't have room for them sorry oh, really? scruff. sorry scruff and growler i'll come oh, back oh, to you oh, all these people are gonna be looking for richter in las vegas <laughs> yes, is he a top is he a bottom find out on scruff <laughs> that's right it, get your questions answered uh, all right well richter it's been so great having you on the show thank you so much for joining yeah, us well thank you we'll definitely be uh continuing to watch 10 million dollar bigfoot bounty and um, you know, for sure, we'd love to have you back maybe when the show wraps and you can give us a little more of the All inside the juicy scoop. details of Dean Kane. Yes, oh, yeah. we yeah. like juicy Dean Kane. I mean, details. <laughs> <laughs> Juice, I mean, yeah, I'm flustered, but. 
<laughs> All right. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. And uh, we'll definitely be in touch. And uh, we'll put some links as well in uh, in the show notes for this episode so that people can, you know, find the show and find you on Twitter and all that. And good my stuff. Um, webcast on YouTube after hours. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a video webcast, correct? Yes. We use Google Plus for it. Yep. We're a nice. low budget operation. So we that's, can, so people can see you. That's exciting. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the best kind. So. More Richter, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Richter. Thanks. Have a good one. Take Thank care. You. Thanks Bye. so much. Oh, Richter. We love that guy. That was super fun, guys. That um, was fun. Yeah, I'm was, so glad he was able to come on. Yeah. yeah definitely. Quite a character. A lot of fun. You know, a lot of fun. Absolutely.